the second half of my time in Austin. I'm going to check out the world famous Austin City Limits music venue. Of course, I'm going to check out some more food, including this cool little steakhouse. Uh, join these guys in this tradition of looking at me and figure out why this restaurant shows this notice of seizure on our wall. Check out the Pecan Street Festival. And I'm actually deliberately going to drive by one of my favorite restaurants in the world, Franklin Barbecue, to check out this other place. A little taco stand in the middle of the desert, eating fresh fruit in the L.A. heat. Travel in the country, stopping into every diner, all in the bum right next to me. Traveling food. A place called Austin City Limits is considered one of the most famous music venues in the world, really. So when I knew I was coming to Austin, I knew I had to come check it out. Of course, when I get in there, they have some tacos from a local taco company, so I tried one of those before I went in. But the venue itself, I've always been amazed by what it looks like inside, and they always seem to have some really cool artists, so I'm pretty excited to check it out. My seats are going to be way up there somewhere. I'm still pretty excited to be here. The artist tonight is a duo named First Aid Kit. They're actually from Sweden. They're two sisters that have been performing music for quite some time. I heard about them a few months ago, so I was actually pretty excited that I was going to have a chance to see them. Oh, it's so good to be back. Yes. yes. And in this beautiful theater. Holy Eight years ago, when we were just just kids, and now we are standing here in front of you, before you, as these wise old women. We know it all now. I'm gonna share some of the performance here. Hopefully, I don't get mixed on YouTube, but oh, we'll uh, give it a shot. Thank you guys so much for being here with us. teaser for you. Hopefully I don't get copyright banned on YouTube, but awesome show, awesome venue. Can't wait to go back sometime. A new day means a new day to explore some new food, so I'm going to go check out the Hofbrau, an old school steakhouse right in downtown Austin. I'm pretty excited about the Hofbrau Steakhouse, even though it's lunch. They are not open on Sundays and Mondays. Different days coming up. So it is Wednesday lunch. I'm going to go get a steak. 
Charles and Stacy over at the Coffee Roastery recommended that I check this place out. It actually looked really cool inside. They did have a newer outdoor patio, but really it was the inside of the restaurant that appealed to me. So much history on the walls and really bare bone. I mean, there's just a cast iron skillet right there behind the bar. And uh, other than that, you know, it's just a straight up meat and potatoes kind of place. Skillet right there. Here's the man. How you doing, man? 46 years, I heard. Yeah. You've been here? That's awesome. What's your name? Archie. Archie, I'm Adam. Pretty crazy to hear that Archie had been working here for 46 years. The man behind the grill there cooking up the steaks. The menu at Hot Prow is pretty basic. You pretty much just pick the kind of steak that you want and serve with their house kind of potato wedges, a little side salad, and then you get a little stack of bread to mop up the lots of garlic butter that they douse the steaks with. But pretty damn good. Texas size steak right there. <laughs> That's good if you chop the potato up in the lemon butter sauce and dip your bread in it, okay? Alright guys, I'm gonna throw in the towel. I feel like I'm no doubt a Texas size meal. And I did have the chance to talk to one of the waitresses, the owner, and another guy there that was eating lunch. Hey guys, we're at the Hoff Brow Steakhouse, one of the oldest steakhouses in Austin. This place rocks. This is Lori. Hi. She's hey, one of the servers. She's been here how many years? 25 years. 25 years. So mm -hmm. I was recommended this place by some of my friends that live in Austin, and it's fantastic. It's a meat and potatoes kind of place. I just had like a 22 ounce T bone. I couldn't decide between the strip and the place, so I had to go to a porterhouse, I guess. So it was That's amazing. They douse it in like lemon garlic butter, and then they serve potato wedges and you know, right. chop them up. And, a little bit garlic butter, but it's awesome. So I'm gonna give you a quick little tour. Uh, they got a bunch of cool pictures on the walls. RC is the guy. In that picture, the man that's been manning the grill for 46 years here. And they're about to close between their dinner and their lunch. So it's a little slow in here right now, but awesome, awesome place. This is Zach, he's the owner. He's been showing me around the place. Super nice guy. I wanted to show you because it's cool they got all these old pictures on the walls. So if you look up here, that's Zach working in the kitchen back in the day. So all you little kids out there, follow your hearts, man, and be the owner of a cool restaurant like this. So thank you, Zach. I appreciate no problem. It, Right. Guys. So I was leaving the steakhouse and I ran into Daryl and caught one of us talking about Good Eats in Austin. So he's going to tell me about a barbecue place he's raving about. It's called Jacob Potato Nards on East 11th Street. So barbecue. Young kids cooking it. And... Yeah, he said, it's, he said it's like old school, authentic, not commercialized. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So I, I wrote it down. I'm going to check it out later. But this thing is so cool. Here I am enjoying like one of the best steaks I've ever had. Now I got a big the opportunity to meet this gentleman and giving me some suggestions on some new food to check out in town. So I'm going to be sure to check it out in the next few days. But thank you, sir. Uh, All right. Anytime. And he's a Gator fan, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. See y'all. So I just went in here to check it out, even though I'm full from the steak. It looked like a cool little pizza shop. Went to go look at a menu. Um, they did not have any more to-go menus. And the guy told me that they're actually going to be closing in November. So my guess is that they're in a, you know, look right over here, big part of downtown where there's all those new developments. So they're probably going to be building a sky rise on this property, which is kind of sad. I told the guy I was going to check out the menu online and he said the owners are pretty old school and don't do that kind of thing. But it's going to be sad when these kind of places go away. Right, it looks pretty good. And right around the corner from the pizza shop is a cool looking hamburger stand. Again, I'm full, but I'm going to go keep my head in there and see what it looks like inside. It's another really cool looking place. So much stuff on the walls, so much history and just local things and lots of awards for their burgers. Uh, it's difficult when you're short on time. Obviously, when you get to a city, there's only so many places you can eat, and that's kind of a bummer. Hey, so what's the bag of burgers? 45, and this is 1939. When is it open? 39? Or? Yeah, 1939, uh-huh. Yeah. That's when it opened, yeah. Some old photos of the restaurant. 70s. Uh, my boss is right here. Oh, really? Yeah, he's right there. Uh, one. Oh, is he behind the bar? Yeah, he was behind the bar. 
Uh, these are some of the people that used to play back over here, back in the old days. A lot of history in this place. Yeah, there'd be a lot of stories. Yeah. Yeah. So right next to the Pecan Grove RV Park was this place called P. Terry's Burger Stand, which is an Austin-based kind of fast food company similar to like an In-N-Out Burger, and they had this root beer milkshake that I quickly fell in love with. So a lot of the times when I was walking Holland, I would stop in and get a milkshake. I was on my way to just go look at the skyline of Austin one night and came across this pretty interesting guy that was ahead of me in line. And he had just gotten this text message from a buddy of his, or a friend of his, that uh, apparently sent him a picture of somebody that apparently looked like him, and it was pretty funny. Alright guys, I'm going to get another root beer milkshake from Terry's because I love it. But I just met James. What's up? He's getting a milkshake too, but look dude, he's got his own guest room piece <laughs> with an earring. And he's got an earring. It's funny, his friend just texted him that, but cracked me up. But. What's right. up? A few nights during my stay in Austin, I'd head out to this little pedestrian bridge uh, that crossed over the Colorado River, actually, if you can believe it or not, and would just uh, sit down on one of the benches there and check out the skyline. One evening, uh, this evening, there was actually a, what appeared to be a homeless man kind of playing some tunes, but we got to chat, which was kind of cool. He noticed Holland and actually played a song for us uh, because he saw Holland's. This is a song called Pistol Slapper Blues by Blind Boy Fuller. purpose of me actually going to Austin was to go to this pretty cool travel conference called Travel Con. And look, I even took a little bit of notes. Oh, and look, there's a barbecue place right next to the conference. I uh, better go check it out. We're at Cooper's, another uh, brisket barbecue place. This one's now. That sounds like a great idea to me. Oh, this is a pretty cool place. So, like a lot of the places in Texas, you order your meat by the pound and picture sides and then they have the barbecue sauces, onions, peppers, pickles, and white bread. Box of goodness. Sausages, turkey ribs, the beef ribs, brisket, pork ribs, chicken, your vinegar sauce. Normally beef ribs are really big, but they actually had some smaller ones here. So I got a beef rib, some of their sliced brisket, some of their chopped brisket, and I got some of their sauces, pickles and onions, and their pinto beans from the, the bar over there. And a really cool place. The next day was the second day of Travel Con, so I checked it out. They had actually a lot of tourism boards there, which was pretty cool. Visit California was there. And today, lunch was catered by Torchy's Tacos, which is a local Austin-based taco company. I've heard a lot about them. Got to visit the taco truck. It was pretty amazing. So we're taking the pedestrian bridge back to downtown. That's Holland. And a cool view of the skyline. We're going to check out some parties for the conference. I must say, Austin is pretty pedestrian and bike and pet friendly, so they have all these cool little bridges and walkways that you can walk around downtown. And they didn't say I couldn't bring my dog to these after conference parties, so I'm going to bring her with me. The after party was on a rooftop bar in downtown Austin, so since it was outside, Holland was welcome. We behaved, um, but now it's time to call it a night. Gator game tomorrow. Oh. So it's Saturday again in the fall. Again, that means football. The Longhorns are actually on the road this Saturday. Um, but I did find some local University of Florida Gator clubs. As you probably know, I'm a pretty big Florida Gator fan. So Holland and I decided to take a walk through downtown to a place called Handlebar, which is one of the places in downtown Austin where a bunch of Gator fans get together and watch the game.
Cannonball. I definitely think we're in the right spot. It's always cool to see a Florida Gator flag in Texas. They're gonna be showing the game downstairs, but since we got there a little bit early, we're gonna go check out another rooftop patio. When's the last time you've seen a teeter totter? Got herself a good little seat for the game. Go play action here in South Touch, 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 touch. touch. And in true Gator Nation spirit, we are the boys of Old Florida is sung after the third quarter with the sway. I love it. Alright, we're going to the Good Life Barber Shop. Or is the barber shop? So the fellow gators that I met at the watch party, they actually own a cool little bar, a speakeasy in downtown Austin, and maybe I shouldn't give it away, but the front is a barber shop. And if you walk through the back door, there's actually a cool little speakeasy in there. You can actually walk into that barber shop area and enjoy a beer. What's it? Liquor lockers. Oh, that's funny. It's a pretty cool place and definitely pretty unique. Secret door. Hi there. One of my last days in Austin, I heard about this thing called the Pecan Street Festival, which I thought was a pecan festival, but it's actually a festival named after the name of the street, Pecan Street. So guys, we're at the Pecan Street Festival in Austin, and of course there's some pretty good food around here. And this is a new one I've never seen before. Jalapeno boudin on a stick. There it is, the jalapeno boudin. It's a cool little festival, lots of local vendors, lots of artwork, some local food, and just kind of a cool afternoon to get out and explore part of Austin. A little taco stand in the middle of the desert, eating fresh fruit in the LA heat, traveling the country, stopping in the every night, all in the pub right next to me. Traveling food. Up with some jerky. Lucky dog. Alright, we're gonna go check out this little street taco stand. Thought it was a restaurant, but it looks like it's just a uh, walk up to the window. And order a taco kind of deal. And there were a handful of stages throughout the street with lots of different local music going on, which is pretty cool. Cool festival, but now it's time for me to go check out this other place in Austin that I've been wanting to check out, the Texas Chili Parlor. Alright, another cool spot, the Texas Chili Parlor. It's been here for a long time. It's chili Parlor. Old school Texas looking joint. 
don't know about you, but another food I think about when I think about Texas is good old Texas chili. Hot chili cool beer. Another really cool looking place on the inside. Lots of uh, stuff on the walls. And I'm gonna meet the owner, Zub. He used to work in the oil fields way back in the day. And apparently this place was in foreclosure once upon a time and he stepped up and purchased it. Nice uh, sign, Miller Lite. I like it. But yeah, really cool on the inside. Texas Chili Parlor opened in 1976 and according to the back of the menu, later that year, chili was named the official state dish of Texas. Went with a bowl, a small bowl of their double X red chili, which is kind of like the regular hot chili, and a taster, as they call it, of their white chili made with roasted pork. Alright guys, we're at the uh, Texas, Chili Parlor. Texas Chili Parlor. This is Zub right here. He just, um, just told me about the history of the place, how he saved it back in 2002. Eat more cool. chili. Yeah. No, a great place, man. Come check it out. There's, there's, there's a short the version. Falls Favorite off. drunk falls off stool, saves Chili Parlor. Um, there you That's go. the extreme short version. You heard it there first. So. The place has been running better than it ever has for. 16 years now. Yeah, awesome. It's definitely, when you think of Texas, it's the kind of place you think of. So. Let's get a good ball of rain. Very cool. And it's already packed in here. It's just after 11. You know, chilies, gumbo. Yeah, burger gumbo is awesome. It is awesome. It's awesome. Let's get in the big tour. Our chili pots. Nice. So they got some stories. We use 100 pounds of meat. We 100 pounds of meat. It comes out to about 18 gallons of chili. These are 80-quart pots, so. That's Rosa. Hey, Rosa. Thank you both in town. Right, Rosa? Another cool Austin <laughs> institution, and I can't wait to go back and get some more chili sometime. Right. So our stay at Pecan Grove RV Park is coming to an end. It's been interesting. It did the trick. It was a great location. But we are on to the next spot. Oh. Gonna go check out that Jay Leonardi's barbecue, which is actually just up the road from one of my favorite restaurants in the world, Franklin Barbecue. And they already got a big line out front. But we're gonna grab some lunch at Jay Leonardi's and check it out. It was good. I got some of their moist brisket, one of their house-made sausages, uh, this jalapeno cream corn that they make, and a little side of their beans. Next to Jay Leonardi's was this cool little kind of compound with a bunch of other food trucks, including this one called the Dominican Food Truck. And this guy's jamming out, making some stuff. Austin's definitely full of a lot of cool places just like this. Uh, we're gonna hit the road, but first we actually got invited to go share our story with the local KVUE TV station in Austin. So Holland and I are gonna go go on air. I'm a little nervous, but hopefully everything will go okay. He quit his job, sold his possessions, bought a travel trailer, and is now eating his way across the US with his dog, Holland. Sounds like a dream, right? <laughs> or a good book? Adam Bosting, known as the Traveling Food Dude, is finally making a stop here in Austin. It's been a food-filled one, right? 10 days you said you've been here? So I've been in Austin for almost two weeks now. I was actually attending a travel conference out here, so that was what prompted me to pick Austin as my first destination. And I gotta admit, it's been pretty stressful only because there's so much good food here. When I was driving in from Houston yeah. on 290 into Austin, it's like every Every other mile, I saw like a barbecue joint or something like that. I was like, I gotta <laughs> it's stop, hard to I gotta stop, stop, right? Yeah. I know. I bet you've got some good selections. Uh, at first, I guess I want to ask you, how in the world did you 
decide to do this? Because I think a lot of people have dreams like this, but how do you actually make it happen? Man, it's so about two years ago, I kind of, my eyes opened to the fact that people actually do this. I've never, I've been working ever since I was 14 and always kind of done the corporate career. So I've never been exposed to people essentially doing this kind of lifestyle. And then about two years ago, I started following different people doing this on social media platforms. and. It inspired me and life's short kind of thing. So you never know what's gonna happen to you. And it took a while for me to make the plunge because obviously it's a big change um, from my daily routine and sure. getting out of my comfort zone a little bit. But we have such a beautiful country and there's so much culture and food in the United States that um, I just, I wanna go out and explore and, and just do it. So I saved up a little bit of money and fortunate enough to have the support from my friends and family. So uh, as of two weeks ago, here we go. So, okay, you did real estate before this. You have, I'm assuming you have like all these social media channels now too, so you populate with pictures and yep. documenting your travels, right? And I'd love for everybody to follow along. Traveling yeah. Food Dude, um, Instagram is my big one right now, but I do have a website, travelingfooddude.com, and then I'm gonna do a YouTube channel too. So I have a bunch of content saved up on my computer, and that's one of the things I need to learn how to do along my journey is to create these videos and, and create a website and everything like that, but that's gonna be a focus of mine. and. Um, I've just been so preoccupied eating my way around <laughs> Austin right now. And uh, when I got in here a couple of weeks ago, I went to the USC versus Texas. I'm a big sports fan too. So part nice. of my adventure is going to be kind of visiting tailgates around Smart. the country too. So that was obviously uh, a dream of mine to attend a Texas tailgate. And I wasn't disappointed with the good food that was there. Uh, so what's your, been your favorite place to eat so far? Do you have a couple um, favorites? I was recommended Hofrau Steakhouse, which is in downtown Austin. And I actually didn't even know about it. I saw some mutual friends of mine who run Trinon Coffee. Uh, so I was able to see their roastery that's here in Austin. It's like an Austin-based coffee company. Oh. And as I was talking to them, they recommended Hofrau, Hofrau Steakhouse. This is old school, literally meat and potatoes kind of place. There's a like, ton of garlic butter just put on, on top of your steak. And Can't go wrong with that. Kind of old school. <laughs> Um, but I loved it. It was, like I said, I didn't even know that I was going to go there when I was planning out my tour of Austin. And that, that's been, I think, the, the big pleasant surprise. I just yeah. think a good Texas atmosphere. Well, good luck to you. I think it's kind of fun what you're doing. And maybe you'll inspire some other people to follow yeah, their passions. Right? I appreciate it. And that's my goal. Just follow along. I'd love to make it interactive. So if you have any suggestions on where to go, please let me know. And, and where um, to eat. I next. appreciate the support. So thank you guys. Thank you, Adam. And Holland. Holland's so oh. mild. And here's my right? sidekick right here. So great. That's awesome. Thank you for being here. Good luck to you. Thank you. So, ahead. so we just wrapped up our on-air midday KVUEABC -E Austin uh, little clip. It went really good. Holland got on TV. So now we're going to head down to Fredericksburg, Texas, which is a little German uh, town and also kind of like Texas wine country. Now in the next episode, you'll see a little bit of this very interesting winery that I stumbled upon in West Texas, Texas wine country. And I make it all the way to San Angelo, Texas and meet this interesting lady who's a mayor and she also owns 